What a what a time you've had in I seven know. months. Amazing it's been a lot. It's yeah. been a lot of stuff so, so far. Did you do three auditions for this? I did, yeah. I had an uh, initial audition, which was a sort of wider casting with a lot of young northern actors my age. And then it goes through to a second round, which was with Chris Gascoigne, actually on the set. Oh, right. Which was nerve-wracking, especially being with Chris. Um, and then I, I thought that would be it. I thought that it was all done. If I've got it, I've got it. If I've not, I've not. And then they rang up again and said, would you mind coming back in? We've narrowed it down to an even smaller pool. We want you to do a screen test with Katie McGlynn, who plays Sinead. And I thought, oh, it's all to go again. So came back in. Got that done, and then... And then the rest is history. But what a role. I mean, the storylines you've had, probably the, the, the biggest one that, I mean, made all the, the front of the papers was the Who Pushed Ken yeah. storyline. Yeah. Um, you knew about that six weeks... Yeah, about six weeks, two months before. before and you, this, and certainly normally we talk about keeping this secret from everybody, but even your fellow cast members, you yeah. couldn't tell them either. Um, uh, well, it wasn't that I couldn't tell them, it was that we sort of said that we maybe we shouldn't because it may, what we were hoping it would do, and it did, was start to foster sus suspicion amongst us, which would then <laughs> translate Roll over, over. Yeah. Onto, the, onto the story. So, Difficult and it was for fun. you, though. Yeah, it was, especially when... Because they all knew each other for years and they have a sort of code amongst each other anyway, and I didn't know whether I was breaking yeah, something by coming in and keeping it to myself yeah, or, yeah. or anything like that, but everyone seemed to... Couldn't tell you now, though. No. <laughs> and she's a big fan, isn't she? Sorry? Your nan. Oh, yeah. No, I couldn't tell my nan. And she is a massive, massive fan. She's watched it since very, very beginning. I think uh. she's probably watching right now. Hello. So you must have had a little panic, though, because you must be thinking, right, well, if I've pushed him down the stairs, this is going to be the end of his character, yeah, really, because it's not going to end well for him, is it? Well, because Coronation Street's a very moral show, isn't it? Mm. So any character that does anything amoral, eventually the show will catch up with them and get rid of them or punish them for it. So I thought, well, there's no reason that this character would be immune to that. So I asked Kate Oates, who's the producer, I said, does this mean I need to get my CV refreshed and start handing it out again and, yeah. and stuff like that? Because I was genuinely concerned that that'd be it, yeah. And what did uh, William Roach t say, say to you? Because, I mean, you, it, it was quite physical. Yes. He said, um, well, because he rem he's, looks like everybody's granddad what also as well, doesn't he, in a way? I was had a lot of physical stuff to do with him, a lot of tackling him and, and pushing him against sofas and walls and things like that. And I was being quite reserved and timid with him because yeah. he's, and he's... He's an icon. Well, he's well icon. Yeah. Um, and he said, I used to play rugby, you won't hurt me, come at me. And so you did? Yeah. Oh, well done. Yeah, yeah that must have been quite nerve-wracking. Yeah. So, the storyline continues then, because obviously Ken forgave him, yeah. and then he was sort of banished from the Barlow family mm -hmm. and he spiralled, and we saw those scenes the other night uh, where he's turned to drugs. Yeah. Um, and, and really hard-hitting scenes. You got, you got quite a response on social media to that, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Um, there was... Overwhelmingly, people understood, and before that it even aired, people were saying, Daniel needs help, not... Um, prison uh, and yeah. things like that. So there was a feeling that people were understanding it was uh, someone who was in psychological turmoil as opposed to someone who was getting off on doing it. Yes, yeah. Um, but there was a lot of... I got a lot of direct things to me saying about the time of night that it went out and things like that. I believe there were some reports to Ofcom about it. But, I mean, by the time it gets to me, it's gone through so many different... Mm. Absolutely. And, and, and Coronation Street are very sensitive yeah, the way they yeah. handled it. I thought that they did it. it. They didn't show method and I thought yeah. they showed... I thought it was quite well. Yeah, well, so oh. the drug dealer's coming in to get his money mm -hmm. and then... I don't, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but Chesney comes in and gets caught up in a situation. Yeah, so in this is tonight's episode so um, after that uh, it, it gets a little bit of an altercation and a bottle is broken and it's in the sort of fray with that that Chesney comes in and he gets caught in it yeah. and ends up being injured from it. Well it's, it's a big episode and, um, and it's on tonight that you can watch that and, and see where this story goes but well done and well done thank on you. your soap award as oh, well. That yeah, is yeah, wonderful. Yeah, that's a fun really night. Wonderful. Yeah that was a fun night. Well <laughs> thank you. Yeah, nice to see thank you. Thank you very much.